Welcome to the iPhone 5S disassembly and reinstallation guide. To begin the disassembly of your iPhone 5S, use a pentalobe screwdriver and remove the two screws on the bottom of your iPhone 5S. With the two bottom screws removed, go ahead and use a metal spudger to release the bottom of the screen from the frame. Be careful when you do this and do not pull the screen away too quickly because there is the home button and touch ID flex cable still attached to the board of the phone, which you'll see right here. Next, use a black nylon spudger to release a metal bracket covering your Touch ID home button flex cable. Once that's released, the home button flex should disconnect. If not, just use the spudger to disconnect it. Next, using the microphillips screwdriver, you will need to remove the four screws holding down this metal bracket in place. Next, using your black nylon spudger, go ahead and disconnect the three flex cables attached to the board. We always recommend using the nylon spudger with anything on the board because metal can always conduct electricity and cause damage to your board. Now that we have the screen separated from the actual board of the phone, we're going to only work with this part of the screen. If you do buy the full assembly, all you will need to do is transfer over your home button and touch ID sensor, so please ignore all the other parts we remove if you have bought our full assembly and just do this part right here. You're going to use your Phillips screwdriver and remove the following screws as seen right here. Please note that under this screw right here is a little black antenna or coaxial part. You will need to put this in the exact same orientation as it is removed. Now remove these two screws holding your home button bracket in place. They're both the exact same size. So you can mix them up, but we always recommend using some type of screw mat or a little chart so that you can make sure you're transferring over the correct screws and make sure they go into the right places because a lot of the screws on the uh, frame are different sizes. Now once again, this part right here is really only required if you buy the more expensive of our two assemblies. We have one assembly, which is just the LCD and touchscreen, and then we have this full assembly, which includes everything except for the home button. Sometimes you will get the home button included, but please note you want to use your original home button because without the original home button, your touch ID sensor is not going to work. The button itself will, touch ID will not. So once again, if you have bought the more expensive part, this is really the only step you have to transfer over. The rest of it is only for the people who buy the LCD and digitizer assembly without the small parts installed. Okay, now we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to remove the three screws as seen right here. Under these screw three screws, you are going to have the ear speaker as well as the front camera and proximity sensor flex cable.
this little bracket is actually held in by a clip on the very top. Um, so make sure that when you do put it back in, you put that clip back in place. The part I just removed is actually the ear speaker. And you might see those four little circular gold contacts at the top. The ear speaker lines up with that to actually transmit the audio. Um, so if you ever disassemble this and you put it back together and you notice that your ear speaker is not working properly, check to make sure that those four uh, little circles are lined up properly. You're going to want to go ahead and disconnect that part of it now with your black nylon spudger. Uh, there's a little bit of adhesive on there, so be careful if you need, just use a heat gun. And this part that I'm removing right here is the front camera, proximity sensor, and microphone flex cable. Um, go ahead and rip this off. It, I mean, you can leave it on there. You can rip it off. It, it doesn't really matter because it's attached to this metal back plate cover. Um, sometimes I rip it off. Sometimes I leave it on there. It's really just up to you. Okay, now you're going to have to remove some Phillips screwdriver screws on either side of the frame. Uh, there are two on each side, as seen right here. You want to go ahead and remove all four of these screws so that you can transfer over this metal bracket to your brand new digitizer LCD assembly. Okay, with these now removed, you're going to notice that this metal shield will come off as one piece. It still holds your front camera proximity sensor and microphone in place. So, you really only need to remove that if you're replacing your microphone front camera proximity sensor. Alright, one thing you'll notice about our screens is that we have the proximity sensor, ear speaker, and front camera holds already in place. If you buy a lower end screen, they're not going to have these, and you will need to heat these up off of your original screen and transfer them over to your brand new digitizer LCD assembly. Another great thing about our screens is that we do have the uh, little mesh on the flex cables, which helps protect them. Once again, if you buy a lower end screen, you, you want to put something on the actual flex cables to protect them typically from shock or damage. Alright, so the first thing to reassemble is you're going to put that metal shield back on and put your four micro Phillips screws back into their spots. All right, now this part can be a little tricky. You want to go ahead and put your little microphone back into its slot. You'll see a slot there. Once again, if you buy our low end screen, that slot's not going to have it. Ours will. Um, you'll want to line up your front camera into its bracket. You're going to want to line up your proximity sensor into its bracket as well. Uh, once again, these can be a little difficult to put in, so take your time, but make sure they're in there properly. Otherwise, your front camera might be blurry. It could be unaligned. Your proximity sensor may not work. Proximity sensor is the part that actually makes the screen go black when it's up to your ear. Um, so if that's not in there properly, your screen may just stay on and you'll be pressing buttons with your face. That can obviously be a headache. Alright, once those are all properly aligned, go ahead and put your ear speaker back into its spot. It lines up with these two little white brackets appropriately. Um, and once that is in there, you can go ahead and put the metal bracket on top. Like I said, you'll see that little groove on the very top. That's kind of what holds it in place. Uh, it's a little clip. Make sure it's pushing down appropriately and properly. If it's not, then you could actually have the top end of your screen sitting up, um, which can easily lead to a, a new crack, obviously. Once that's all in, go ahead and put the three screws back into place that you removed in the beginning. 
I like to start with that screw um, followed by the next two but once again just make sure that that little metal shield is properly under the bracket otherwise like I said your screen could set up now we are using the original screen back on this phone because this is just one of our test phones so it is obviously a little dirty it's not a brand new screen but we just wanted to see and show you guys how to reassemble the screen if you were to purchase one from us all right as you can see my little metal brackets already properly tucked in it's in place once I've ensured that that's the case now I can go ahead and put that that main screw in Alright, so now we're going to put back the home button flex cable and touch ID sensor. You'll want to go ahead and put your home button in its spot. You'll see this little white bracket um, on the top where the little chipset should align with. Make sure that's aligned properly so that your touch ID sensor is in its correct spot before you uh, put all the screws back in place. Alright, let's go ahead and grab our home button bracket. And we will screw our home button bracket back in with the two micro Phillips screws before we screw in the top right screw. So let's go ahead and put these into place. Make sure your home, back, home button bracket is aligned the exact same way I have it here. If you put it upside down, your home button's not going to click properly once you have it all assembled. And that can easily be messed up. So just notice the orientation here. Make sure you have your home button bracket the exact same way. All right, once those two screws are in, go ahead and put this little chip on top. Once again, make sure that that little black thing above the screw is aligned properly. So you'll want the little chip to be on the very top. All right, and you'll see me pointing to what I'm referring to right here. It's this little metal chip. Make sure it's oriented in that exact same way. All right, now we can go ahead and assemble the screen assembly with all the small parts installed back onto the board of the phone. Once again, there are these three flex cables you want to plug in. So go ahead and do that in the exact same way I'm doing it. I like to do it in this, this order right here just makes it a little bit easier overall. All right, this third flex cable is a little bit tricky. Take your time, make sure you feel the ac actual snap. If you don't feel the snap and it's not in place, your front camera and proximity sensor won't work. Once those three cables are in, we're gonna go ahead and put this metal bracket down with the four screws. Please note these four screws are all actual different sizes and you need to make sure you get them in the exact same spots. Don't just mix and match these screws. These are very important that you get them in the right spots. Um, if you do put them in the wrong spots, we do recommend going online and seeing which size goes into which hole because it can cause damage to your proximity sensor. It's not a very expensive part to replace, but it can cause damage to that part, which is a $10 or so part. And of course, we do carry it at our website, but hey, if you do it right the first time, you won't have to spend an extra $10, $10 to fix that mistake. All right, we're about wrapped up here now. Now you just need to connect that Touch ID flex cable to the actual board of the phone. The plug will have to clip in. I like to use a uh, black nylon spudger to kind of plug it in. Make sure you do hear the click or you feel the click because if you, you haven't placed it down properly, your home button won't work, your Touch ID sensor won't work. And of course, without the home button on the iPhone, you're, you're in a lot of trouble.
Of course, once you get that to go ahead and click in, go ahead and get that little metal bracket that goes on top, as seen right there. Make sure it's in the same orientation we have it. Um, and make sure that clips in properly so that it holds down that little touch ID sensor. The correct orientation is with the little one bracket on top and the two clip brackets are on the bottom as seen here. Alright, once it's all put together, go ahead and uh, slide your phone from the top because there's actually two little clips on the very top that need to be aligned. So you'll see me slide it from the top first, make sure those are in, and then you'll want to go along the sides slowly and just kind of clip it into place. If you go fast, you could end up cracking your brand new screen. Um, and then also another thing you want to make sure of is sometimes on these iPhone 5S's, the metal frame once you drop it and crack it, the frame itself is bent. So your screen may not fit snug in there. If your screen isn't snug, um, we recommend just taking like a little tool and actually having to bend out the frame a little bit. Um, but that's not very typical or often that you're gonna have to do that. Once that's all done, go ahead and put in the two pentalobe screws on the very bottom using your pentalobe screwdriver. And you have successfully completed and installed a brand new digitizer LCD assembly on your iPhone 5S. As always, we always have repair videos and tutorials on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, feel free to message us or leave us a comment in the comments tab. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and visit our website for all your repair and accessory needs.